Hello everyone, this is Century Countess and this is the doll paint for my first doll online. Um, these are my su supplies, watercolor paints, I mean brush it, pencils, my bad, paint brushes, Mr. Super Clear, the whole bit. And this is just basically a miniature documentary of me making my first ball jointed doll. Um, I also used makeup, like blushes and stuff for the shadowing, the highlights, etc. Um, I was really nervous because this is actually my first doll repaint and having to basically film it on camera and make sure that you did it right. Um, it wasn't easy. I mean, you had to do it on camera while paint looking at it and painting it keeping your fingers crossed that the focus was all right because i mean one little flaw and you'll mess up and i did mess up in several clips of this video um i decided to go with consort yang because i mentioned it on instagram it was my character that I chose for the trailer when I announced that I was going to make my first ball jointed doll repaint or basically paint I mean it's an unpainted ball jointed doll so not really a repaint but other than that it's a doll creation in a way um I'm sorry for those who m might have made left a comment on the dolls that they wanted um I realized, you know what, I need to quit um, doing like these last minute changes and um, stick with the main project. So, Consort Yang it was. But I will do those other dolls in the future. Um, I followed several photographs of the character Consort Yang. Um, but I wanted to give her a sort of a expression, so I did like this slightly lifted, raised brow to kind of give her a little bit of a vivacious attitude. Um, I chose warm colors. I kept the warm colors because she's always in warm colors. There was only one outfit where it had like kind of a purplish lavender color to it, but that was the only cool colors that she ever wore. And her last iconic gown that she wore before she killed herself in the series, there was a little bit of blues in it, but the um, warm colors such as yellow, peaches, and pinks were still there. And speaking of that episode, earlier she was in a more relaxed look. Her hair was partially down. She was in like kind of, I guess, a dressing gown outfit or like a lounging gown basically Tang Dynasty lounging gown, for lack of a better word. And as I said in my drawing sketch of the doll, I was going to go for that look. But she hardly had any makeup, if, no, if any at all, in that scene, in that episode. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and give her makeup, the type of makeup from her other scenes, and yeah so here is a half side eyebrow half other side as i said i was um basically trying to make sure i focused the screen on the, the i mean focused the doll on the camera as well as paid attention to what i was doing and as i said it was not easy keeping your eye on both items so here I am, I'm drawing the other eyebrow. I wanted to go ahead and do one eyebrow first off camera and then do the other eyebrow on camera. I just wanted to kind of give an idea because I was worried that if I did both eyebrows, they may not turn out too well. So I went ahead and did the more relaxed eyebrow and then I did the more slightly raised eyebrow. And then I also added little tips to the sides of the mouth. I kind of saw, I liked the idea after seeing a doll that had the same thing going on and then it fused with her uh, painted lips. And I thought that was really cute. 
and it also kind of gave it more of a smaller lip and I thought you know what I want to go with that um it wasn't on the care it wasn't the care on the character the character had more fuller lips but I thought you know since this is the Tang Dynasty doll from the Tang Dynasty era I wanted to kind of do those beautiful kind of pouty heart like double heart shaped lips that they did back then I mean they had a hundred who knows how I mean maybe thousands of lip styles as well as eyebrow styles so I wanted to at least um put that um in somewhere keep it as traditional as possible but make sure it's still the character and I added this little lotus flower at the center of the um forehead that's based on a lotus flower design that was on a scene in an episode that she wore now if anyone wanted to know a little bit history lesson for you um there wasn't any iconic significance significance Ugh. tongue twister there wasn't any symbolism behind the lotus flower that was on the forehead it wasn't a sign of rank it wasn't a sign of um marriage um like other cultures who put like dots on their forehead when they're married um it was nothing like that it was actually started up i want to say before the founding of china during the reign of the four kingdoms um it was um a story it was started but from a story either true or fiction that um Either, I believe, a princess was sleeping under plum blossoms and one of the plum blossoms fell on her forehead and it stained her forehead and it wouldn't wash off for a few days. But the way the stain was done, it looked like a little flower. So that's basically how it began. It began from an accident that actually became an iconic uh, fashion statement that continued on through, I guess, the end of the royal dynasties before um, they decided, you know, no more monarchy. We're just going to modernize and um, do some, you know, do something else that might work for us. So that's basically how the... Um, whole flower in the center of the forehead started it came from a accident um that ended up becoming a fashion statement and as i said no significance no symbolism just a just a type of fashion like a type of um trend that um started along with some other um trends so um see where are we I again I apologize for the out of focus um, so right now I'm working on the blush and this was a nightmare um, it started out okay then on the first side and then the second time I did it on the other side it was a little too dark so I had to go over it with some acrylics to kind of wash it out Eventually, I just had to um, blend in with a lot of acrylic. Fortunately, the uh, paint that I have matches the color tone of the head, so I was able to tone that as best as I could. And then later on, I don't know if I put it on camera or not, I did contour underneath the chin and the jawline kind of give it a little bit more um, depth to it. I also eventually changed the shape of the blush. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it, but um, I saw I used I saw the image of um, Princess of China Barbie and um, I got a close up range of how her makeup was done and I decided, you know what, I'll follow that rouge pattern. And it basically looked like the eyeshadow was the same, similar to the um, rouge. So, and it started 
from the upper lid, lower lid, and then fused with the cheeks. So I tried to do that look. And I also kind of slightly did it as rounded as I could. As I said, I was following what I could find. And as I said, I wanted to try to make this look traditional to the Tang Dynasty China, but also pay homage to the character that I wanted this doll to portray. <clears throat> So I just finished the the blush and um, I like I said I added a light skin tone acrylic that matched the skin tone of the doll to kind of fade it out a bit so it wasn't too exaggerated and here I am I'm working on the lips. Now this was hard. I mean, as I said, um, looking at the phone camera and then looking at the doll just to make sure everything was right. Um, already I can see that one lip is a little bit low. The upper lip is a little bit low, lower than the other side of the upper lip. So I know I adjusted that on camera. And the brush that was lightly dapped with a little bit of water to kind of darken up the watercolor pencil. So here I am, I'm going over it again. Trying to fix my mistakes as best as I can. Um, I don't have any eyelashes for this doll and I thought eyelashes would make it too exaggerated. Plus, um, I think it would look a little bit too drag queeny with eyelashes. I mean, that's just my preference. Plus, we're on a budget, girl. I mean, seriously. Um, <laughs> we're trying to do something with what we have, especially during this time of um, coronavirus plague epidemic going on. But... Oh, and here's that, uh, got a little bit of a red spot, so she has like a little red beauty mark just above her lip, or up her lips, so I had to erase that, and here it is in full perfection. I finally added a little lotus flower. I decided to do that off camera because I was worried that it would not um, turn out right, because I was basically, one eye was on the camera, one eye was on the doll and tiny details like that require um, special attention and as I said I am training myself I'm literally worked doing my best to train myself to be more better with the camera and here she is with her eyes she looks so much better with the eyes oh I kind of did it to where she's kind of looking to the side which is really awesome because I want to kind of I'm following a photograph and um, the photograph she's staring towards the um, the right and that's what I decided to go for for a doll that's staring to the right instead of facing forward because I thought um, her staring off in another direction would have made more um, would have been more original would have been a little bit different compared to some of the other doll repaints, doll making where the eyes are looking right straight forward.